tops get real light here. Rooted, grounded. Take a deep breath in through the nose, filling up your belly, your ribs, your chest, taking the breath maybe even to your collarbone or to the crown. On your exhale, open up your mouth, let it go. You can be audible, you're at home, that's okay. Again, deep breath in through your nose. And exhale. One more time, big breath in. Straighten up your spine, see if you can sit up just a little bit straighter. Proper posture makes yourself almost an inch taller. Exhale through your nose or your mouth. <sighs> Inhale, gather up your energy, hands meet in high prayer. And on a slow exhale, let's take them to your heart. Core, core, core. Let's take a seat, and if you have a block handy, I want you to grab it. If you don't, for whatever reason, have a block, that's okay. You can use a textbook, you can use um, a rolled up towel, whatever. And we'll start by placing the block in between our knees. And it's just about like maybe two inches below your kneecap, and we'll lie all the way down. All right. So let's work on bandhas. Let's work on energy locks first. Pull your bathroom muscles up and in. This is one of the most common locks in yoga. And it's your mula bandha. So everything is pulled up and in. And that leads you to your next bandha, right? Or like six inches below your belly button and we're pulling in our bellies, like we're trying to pull our navel to our backbone. And then knit your ribs back. So everything's really contracted, everything's pretty tight, but there's still room for your diaphragm to expand on the inhale. All right, let's pick up our knees. And you feel everything kind of contracted, put your knees back down. Again, pull everything in and up, squeeze the block, come up 90 degrees. And it's from here, we'll take our hands behind our head. You can make a basket with your fingers right at the nape of your neck. Breathe in, exhale on the crunch. Breathe in, exhale on the crunch. Let's take 10 of these. Exhaling every time you crunch. Squeezing the block. Five, four, three, two, and one, let's take the feet all the way up to the sky. And we're still contracted, we're still pulling in through the belly. We take our hands to your heart and we just hold here. And what we're doing by putting a block in, in our legs, our legs, they carry us around all day. They are so strong. They hold most of the musculature of the whole body is in your femur, right? So when we squeeze and we activate, it tells the rest of our body, it's time to shape up or ship out, right? So you're squeezing and you're tightening and you're lengthening. Take a big breath in. And we'll move from left to right. Left to right for 10, nine, squeezing, activating the whole time. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. We touch our toes. If you can't touch your toes, just reach for them and we'll pull up, down, lifting up through your pelvic floor, squeezing your belly. Beautiful, let's take five, four, three, two, and one. And it's up here that you start to feel a little bit of pulling. We'll place the head down, bend your knees, remove your block, give yourself a big hug. And we'll start to rock from side to side. Find some stillness in the center, see out your arms, breathe in, prepare for the twist, exhale, knees go left, gaze goes right. And it's nice to counter any abdominal like crunches or breathe in, anything like that with a spinal articulation and a heart opener. So if there's every day you do like a boatload of planks, I encourage you to mix in some back bends, some twists. All right, come back to center. And we will take both legs up, interlace your hands, place them right at the nape of your neck, breathe in. On your out breath, take the right elbow to the left knee. Tap the right toes. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, tap left elbow, right knee, tap the left toes. Again, breathe in, exhale, twist. Inhale, exhale, twist. And let's take this. These are kind of like delicate scissor crunches. So again, we're not trying to go too fast. We're trying to find proper form and core that sweet spot. 
sometimes if we move too fast, our goal is missed and we are ineffective. Let's take 10 more. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Feet go up and you're still contracted. We have not dropped the shoulders yet. We'll extend from the leg, maintaining that same twist, right elbow, left knee, here we go. This time your right leg extends, bring it up. Exhale, twist. Inhale up for the twist to exhale. Always breathe in, twist. Let's take 10 more. 10, nine, pause it at the top for straight legs. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, shoulders up off the mat, two, and one. Straight arms, straight legs. We're pointing our fingers. We're steepling our fingers. We'll move left, right, left and up, right and up, left, right, left, pull up, right, pull up. One more time. Left, right, left, pull up, squeeze, and pull up. All right. Shoulders down. Your knees are into your chest. Big toes touching hands on your knees. Inhale, open. Exhale, close them. One more time. Inhale, open. And exhale, close. We'll switch directions. Opening up from the opposite side is just as important for the hip socket. And then we'll take the knees in one circle motion counterclockwise, switch it clockwise. Beautiful. Catch them on your knees. We'll slowly roll all the way up. And now you can start to feel your belly. I can feel my abdominals. They've been worked a little bit. We move into the next practice, which moves from a supine. Supine just means on your back, reclined, um, to seated. So you're on the sits bones, and again, wiggle out the flesh from underneath the sits bones. Maintain a straight line of energy from tailbone out the crown of your head. So in boat pose, you usually get a little ego creeping up where you want to straighten your legs almost immediately. I want you to let that go for now. If it comes easy to you to get your legs straight, great. If it doesn't, there's so many options, effective options in this beautiful boat pose. Um, the Sanskrit term for this is Navasana. Pull your navel in, knit your ribs back. All right, so you feel that lift. We have a sturdy lift. We are supported from here. Not from here, not from here. Everything is moving from our belly. All right, breathe in. On your exhale, toes, arms. Your arms are just a natural extension of the shoulder. And so some of us, I just did it, we tend to reach forward. I want you to pull your shoulders back, place them in line with their socket, and then lift from the belly. You're lifting your knees to about 90 degrees. All right, if you want, you can take this all the way up, or you can stay here with me. This is where I stay. This is my most effective point of this pose right now. And that's why we do not say full expression of the pose, because this is my full expression, and it might not look like yours, and it might not look like hers, but this is where my practice is. Breathe in. On your exhale, we're laying it flat, hovering one inch up off the mat, Low boat. Beautiful. Inhale, come up to boat. Exhale, low boat. Tuck your chin. We have another banda at work now. Inhale, up. Exhale, hover. Inhale, up. On your hover, feel like you're squeezing a big apple in between your chin and your sternum. Exhale, hover. One more time. Inhale, up. Exhale, hover. Place your hands at side body. We'll fly here and pull everything in and you're wiggling and you're moving and you're supported with your belly. Last five, four, three, two, one, pull up. Cross your ankles, plant your hands. Let's walk or float it back. So we're in plank, down dog. Beautiful, and let's take our knees down. A few cat cows are helpful after any sort of abdominal work. Just gives a little bit more opening to the abdominal wall. And
And again, a counterbalance for your spine, for your heart. All right. So now that your belly is pretty warmed up, we move right into a variation of headstand. So headstand is all core. There is no trick to it. To maintain a headstand and to get into one safely, you have to have a supported base. You just have to. Um, no jumping into headstand, no like launching, no kicking up. We want to flow so gracefully up into headstand that much of our weight isn't in our head at all, right? We're so lifted and rooted um, that we aren't sacrificing the health of our neck ever or our spine. All right. So one of the first ways to learn headstand is to interlace your fingers and stick both of your pinkies on the ground as well as the surface area from your pinky to your elbow. And if you're wondering how far apart your hands should be, because some of us could make a tiny, right, a tiny little base. Some of us might have this wide base. It's about uh, forearm width distance. So if it helps, grab your forearms, plant them on the earth, and then find your base. And that's about where you should be. All right. And keep a block handy. We might use that in a second. So after you've made your sturdy base, we start to stack our bones. And we just put our head down. Breathe in. On your exhale, curl under your toes. So you're cradling the back of your head. Curl under your toes and start to walk the feet up towards your elbows. And I encourage you to use a wall if you have a lot of fear. When I first saw somebody in a yoga class do a headstand, I had so much fear for them. I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna fall over. Oh my gosh, what if they fall onto me? So just knowing that you are not alone, that everybody experiences fear in inversions, scoot your mat up to a wall. All right, so you're cradling your head. You made that beautiful support system with your lower body, excuse me, with your upper body. And we'll just hang out here. So try and get your hips over your shoulders. And just play here for a little bit. Feel the sensation of weight moving into your forearms. We're pushing down with the shoulders. So we don't get in this posture and just like completely um, stop activating places in the body. We're completely activated. Shoulders push down and you can feel that, right? So push your shoulders down. Nice. And on your next inhale, take a deep breath in. Exhale, pull one knee into the chest. And we'll switch. Breathe in. Exhale, pull the right knee into the chest. Gorgeous. Breathe in. On your exhale, you start to stack both knees. And we'll come down. And so we can continue on this pattern. And you can do that, you know, for a couple breaths on each side. Maybe you could get some hang time at the top. Maybe five to ten breaths to start. And maybe, you know, if you do need a wall, you can last a little bit longer, but don't force it. Nothing should ever be forced in an inversion. All right. So once you've tried playing around with that, the next place you can go is to start your pike practice. So again, abdominals, it's all core. Breathe in. And exhale. abdominal, it takes a lot of core, it takes a lot of patience, and again, eliminating a lot of the fear so you don't flip over. But if you do flip, you'll probably land safely in a full wheel or a variation of a back bend. So once we get out, what do we do? Counter pose. Every inversion you take, you need a counter pose. We'll place our head on the mat and start to lift from the pelvis, from the hips, and see if you can catch your heels. This is rabbit. Beautiful. 